Hello everybody out there, my name is Chris, and you are about to enter the once late, but always great, talking about rebirth, retooling, and a whole bunch of other words that probably start with re in it, Dark Avenger Podcast. Here we go. One more time. And welcome back, everybody. Really sorry this episode's a week late. Circumstances beyond my control happened. Stuff going on at home. Stuff I was working on online. I never uh, found the chance to actually record this episode. I'm a little bummed because I tried to set a goal where I wouldn't be delayed on episodes, especially for this podcast, at least until I had more episodes under my belt. Or even this went to a weekly format, if it ever does. And uh, for this to happen in episode three, I'm kind of a little bummed, but uh, I'm going to try to get you guys episode four next week so that the episodes will be back on their uh, planned weeks. Uh, This episode, though, I had to make sure I had enough time uh, for it. I wanted to make sure I took the special time out to do this because we're going to be talking about DC Comic Rebirth. Uh, That's going to be the main topic. So this is going to be a mainly comic book episode uh, for uh, this episode. Uh, But before we get into Rebirth, uh, really quickly, um, I just want to talk about a couple of things that have been going on and that will be going on soon. And I I guess a good place to start would be uh, YouTube really quick, just restating what I had already stated on YouTube. If you want to hear the full story, go check out um, Dark Avenger Live episode 69 or the comic book haul, the weekly comic book haul that is titled We Are Moving, um, where I decided after deep consideration, um, I'm going to be taking... 90% of the content I do on my channel that's uh, new and I'm going to be moving that over to Comic Frontline for multiple reasons, uh, both beneficial for the videos and um, for myself time-wise to give me a little bit of extra time here and there and also there's more freedom uh, I feel with Frontline and it'll in the end I think everybody will benefit. On my channel however I will be keeping my main shows which are Dark Avenger Live, the comic book review that I've been doing now for 335 weeks, and the weekly comic book haul. Everything else will either move over to Frontline or there's that 10% of things that will be canceled. Um, Now when I say canceled, I hate saying canceled as in they'll never come back, but we'll be saying see you later instead of goodbye. Let's put it that way. I, I never like to definitively say anything's over or anything's, you know, gone for good. Because you never know what happens in the future, and I don't like definitively saying anything, and that drives people nuts at times, I'm sure. But um, right now, the podcast, however, and everything on SoundCloud, I would like, I am going to be keeping, uh, I'm going to keep it going. So this podcast will remain on here, this, ch- this um, channel will remain here. Um, some of the exclusive stuff, even though shows are moving to Frontline, we are still going to be doing on this podcast. It's just the main shows that I think that I'm going to uh, hold off on posting audio files for for a bit. I really want to build this channel up as the Dark Avenger podcast and to put the exclusive stuff on here. So uh, other than one, two, three podcast for this week, which is the last episode that will be going up on my channel... Uh, I'm thinking of taking all the other shows that we've been doing that uh, have videos on YouTube first uh, off of here for now and trying to do more exclusive only stuff for this channel. I'm not going to go back and delete all the previous um, stuff because a few people came on and a few people checked it out. If you liked Anime Weekly uh, or any of the other shows I posted from here that were on YouTube, please, I I encourage you to go over to ComicFrontline.com. Subscribe and um, those videos, most of them will be back on, will be up every week on Comic Frontline or in some shape or form on Comic Frontline. I don't want to announce anything here that's being canceled or anything that's being changed because those, I want them to be announced in their own shows. Anime Weekly did change a bit and those announcements were on Anime Weekly. Uh, You can go check out episode 12, it's on Comic Frontline right now. Uh, but I just, I really want to, if I'm going to work, keep working the SoundCloud, I want to work on stuff uh, that's really from SoundCloud, like this show right here. Um, so that's where, where I'm in, what's going on with the internet. And I don't want you guys to worry that I'm going to back out of this SoundCloud thing only three episodes in. I'm going to continue it. I love doing this. And I have a lot of fun talking about certain things with you guys. 
And hopefully at some point you guys will come back and um, comment, ask some questions, and we can definitely talk back and forth through these podcasts at some point. But anyway, uh, gaming-wise real quick, I haven't done anything lately except for a little bit more Division, and I started Rainbow Six. I did a first look and impression. That's live on Frontline Gaming Zone uh, because that is a gaming show. I do them live on my channel, and then the video file goes over to Frontline Gaming Zone. So if you'd like to see my first look impression and impression of uh, Rainbow Six Siege for PlayStation 4, go check it out on Frontline Gaming Zone. I enjoyed it. Um, it's Tom Clancy. The button layout was basically the same. Just a few different things here and there. But uh, for the most part, I, I enjoyed the first um, five situations. I still have to play the last five. Um, but yeah. But this show is not about games. This show is not about anything this week except one thing. And now that we got all that out of the way in under six minutes, because I believe we just passed the six-minute mark, if my time is correct, uh, this show is about DC Comics Rebirth. Now, we all were very nervous when when DC announced that they were going to go into an event known as Rebirth. They said it's not a reboot. Uh, they're going back to their legacies, and it's like, okay, well, how far are you guys going? What what it, what does it entail? You know, they gave no information whatsoever. They just said to they were going to do a panel at WonderCon, and that was about two weeks ago now, which is why I'm very upset that this episode's late because this is kind of a week later than what I wanted to uh, have it out to discuss that or have the discussion out for, but. Um, you know, we were nervous and we all sat down. This was the first panel I sat down from beginning to end because with the New 52, and everybody knows this, I was very skeptical of it when it started. I didn't like a lot of things that happened with Superman. Uh, I didn't know where the universe was going and a lot of people picketed against it. A lot of people got out, old readers got out of comics because of it, but a lot of brand new readers came in. So it was... A blessing and a curse. A blessing for the new readers and to bring new readers in and a curse because the old readers, a lot of the um, fans of the le- le- legacy and mythology, try saying both those words together, um, were, were slighted and a lot of people left. Myself, I decided to stick around. I decided to, you know, go through it and see, you know, maybe things will change as, as time moved on. You know, we went through Forever Evil. We went through Convergence and Convergence brought a lot of uh, promises A lot of new things for the new DC Universe. And now Rebirth, which is something that, again, promises change. But now it's taking what we all used to know, the DC comic legacies, and mixing them with um, the DC Universe that we've been getting for the past five years. And uh, when they announced this, I know a lot of fans were excited. A lot, I mean, I was one of them. A lot of fans were, you know, wondering what exactly was going to go on. And then they mentioned they were going to uh, do a live stream of their panel at WonderCon. And that's where they um, talked about it. Uh, you know, it started with Dan Didio, Jeff Johns, and Jim Lee explaining uh, why Rebirth happened. They claimed that it was always in the works. Um, whether that's true or not, or the fact where Dan Didio later on stated that he noticed at New York Comic Con a lot of people were getting up and leaving when the questions, you know, were you know for the comics were starting the Q and A, and he said from that point he noticed that there was a disconnect with fans. Whether that's true or not, whether it happened at New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con last year, this year, it's because of the sales, because of anything, because of the price. Uh, Because Marvel's doubling up or whatever. Regardless how DC came to their conclusion, whether they're sincere about wanting to change to bring fans back or they want just to, you know, try to get back on top of the sales market, it doesn't matter to me. In my opinion, I want to believe that DC's sincere because I believe they know something's wrong, regardless whether, you know, it's for the fans or because they just see that the sales are not, you know, working. Uh, they know they need a change, and I think Jeff Johns, especially because he gave us Flash and, and Green Lantern uh, Rebirth, which brought both iconic characters, Barry and Hal, back into the DC Universe. Now he's doing a universe-wide Rebirth. I feel confident that with Jeff Johns at the helm, you know, watching all this happen, that we're going to get a lot of the history back in DC, which I'm happy about. But again, there still will be changes, you know, but that's good because people who've been around since the New 52, the fans that DC gained, uh, won't be alienated by the old DCU, which is what happened when fans like myself were forced to go into the new DCU. So I like how they're mixing it up, and it's hilarious that Jay called this. Jay called this 
Since I've known Jay, he said that the new 52 universe was only going to last till issue 52 and then they were going to somehow go back or find a way to uh, bring the old DCU back. And here we are literally a month away because the issue 51s, I believe, are starting this week. We're a month away from the issue 52s and here we go. Issue 52s are the finales to all of the new DCU books that are still going on and we are going into a brand new DC universe. First and foremost, I am happy that um, all of the DC books, even the 80-page special, are going to be two ninety nine. And I feel like, you know, when they mention a lot of books are doubling up and they said, don't worry, we're not going to raise the price. It's still going to only be two ninety nine. And actually, some books that are three ninety nine, like Action, are being brought down to two ninety nine. So I think that that was a huge plus that they are bringing back the drawing the line at two ninety nine, regardless of how big the book is or how many times the book is coming out a month. And it makes the double ups easier, not giving them, you know, kudos yet, because yes, it's still six dollars a month for the double up books. But if you look at Marvel with their three ninety nine double ups, yeah, that's eight dollars a month. That's a whole two dollars more. And I know you're like, well Chris, that's that's just two dollars. When you add those two dollars up, a lot, you know, multiple times for multiple uh, series, yeah, it matters. It matters a lot. So for me, um, the two ninety nine thing really it meant something. It's like you remembered that you drew the line at two ninety nine before the new D, the new fifty two, and I, I'm I I um I like that. And then they started to announce the books. And I'm not going to go in depth with all the books that are coming out. Uh, however, Michael and I are going to be trying all of the number ones out. We Semi did that with the New 52. We grabbed a lot of the New 52, but we didn't grab everything. And then certain books that we didn't grab, we regretted. And later on, it was too late to get them at asking price. So this time around, we're going to be a little smarter, and we're going to try everything, just like what we did with Marvel. And I believe this time around, DC you know, deserves the shots at the number ones as well. So we're going to get everything. And the one thing that's, uh, that's different with DC uh, from Marvel is... Before they release the issue number ones for a lot of the main books, they're releasing Rebirth one-shots, which basically are going to be the introductions to the characters, I guess, and to what the, you know the series are going to be about. But first and foremost, before we get into any of those single issues or one-shots, there's the gigantic one-shot that's going to be dropping in stores at the end of May, which is basically DC Comics Rebirth's 80-page giant, which is basically the setup. For the new status quo in the DC Universe, I don't want to say it's a new DC Universe because they confirmed it's not a reboot. So I'm under the assumption that somehow there's going to be a cosmic thing that happens and it's just going to merge both worlds somehow into one. I don't know. I have no inkling on how they're going to do it. You know, they told us the creative teams. They told us where the books are going to be, but they never explained what exactly will happen in Rebirth. There are three books, however that I would recommend you guys check out if you are going to be going into this 80-page giant. Three books lead into it. The events in the last issues, which are the 52s, of Justice League, as well as Superman, uh, and then there is the final part to Titan's Hunt. All three of those books lead into uh, DC Comics Rebirth, and it was already confirmed uh, that Titan's Hunt was basically a warmer or a setup to there's something else out there. And um, that's where the new status quo is going to come from. And then that 80 page giant will basically, I guess, I don't, I don't, you know, I honestly don't even know where the, they don't tell us much about where this, um, this 80 page giant is coming from. I mean, we see lightning, we see them reaching for a hand on the cover. Is it God? Is it, we don't know who it is, but it's somebody. And that person is going to fix things or change things in the DC universe and um, obviously those changes, some changes from the new DCU that are current are still going on. So I don't know. I guess we're going to get like everybody is saying, a composite of old and new. So let's get into the books. I'm doing these in alphabetical order and you could check these out on ComicFrontline.com. The article is labeled, DC lifts the curtain and reveals rebirth titles, creative teams, dates, art, and more. That's the title, and you also have the live show, which um, Brandt, Kat, and Jay did uh, on this. But then, of course, there are the list of the books, The 80-Page Giant, which um, we just talked about, which the biggest secret in the DC Universe is revealed. 
and Jeff Johns is writing it. So this is Jeff Johns changing or doing his rebirth version of the DC Universe. All right, and we start off with Batman number one. Now, most books, by the way, guys, have rebirth one-shots, which I guess are to catch you guys up on what's been going on with the characters and to set up their new series. So <clears throat> I'll mention the one-shots, but <clears throat> we don't know anything about them. The plots that they mention are for the issue number one. So Batman Rebirth's one-shot comes out June 1st, and then on June 15th we get issue number one. And... Um, Scott Snyder's Batman run was amazing. I really I had a great time with it. Certain stories were drawn out a, a bit too long. So it's going to be nice to see a new direction. Tom King's actually taking this over. And David Finch is going to be on the book, which I love David Finch's Batman. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Batman's also going to be a bi-monthly title. There's going to be two a month. Again, all prices remain $2.99 for every book. So I'm not going to mention that again with the prices either. Because the prices are basically the same for all books. Uh, there are other books that are going to be coming out in between, I guess, to conclude up all the miniseries that will be going on at that time, as well as uh, whatever books are delayed, like Justice League and Justice League of America. <clears throat> but this is all about Rebirth, so let's continue on. Detective Comics goes back to issue number 934 and 935, because that's also a buy. Uh, monthly, a twice a month book. I don't know why it's called bi monthly. It's bi weekly. But anyway, um, Detective Comics does not have a rebirth one shot. I guess Batman Rebirth's one shot basically sets up for all the Batman books. So Detective Comics, like Action, is going back to its original numbering, which first and foremost is amazing because Detective and Action were the closest DC Comics to reaching 1000. These are, these are the history of DC, they're the longest running. Uh, comic titles that the company has to date. So I'm really happy that they went back. And not only that, they added the 52 issues from the new 52 run into the numbers. So the numbers have gone up, 52 issues. So we're not starting where the old DCU ended. We're starting where whatever issue, it's that issue that was the last issue in the old DC universe, plus the 52. So 934, 935. The one thing I like about Detective Comics is Batwoman is back in the forefront. Her and Batman are forming a Bat Family team. And I feel like Batwoman had a, taken a back seat a bit with the new 52. Uh, for some reason, we didn't get to see her as much as we were um, pre-Flashpoint. And she was really the main character of Detective Comics until the new 52 started. And I'm really glad that they're going to bring her back in. And also on the cover, we get to see the first look at Tim's new Red Robin costume and I have to admit I really like it a lot because I didn't like the new 52's version of <clears throat> Red Robin and I didn't like the status quo that he never was Robin so hopefully that will be fixed as well but um, I didn't like the pre-new 52 version of Red Robin either because that was too much like the Kingdom Come Red Robin and that's not Tim so I'm glad that they kind of took the old green and red costume that Tim wore uh, and mixed it with a little bit of the New 52 look and a little bit of the old DCU Robin costume yet. I like it. Now, I really like the new design of the costume is my point. And I'm really looking forward to it. This seems like, Detective seems like it's going to be the Bat Family book. Uh, and I'm I'm really, I'm, I'm excited. I really am. We got Spoiler that's going to be in it. We have Orphan, which basically that's Cassandra's new uh, identity, which she got after Batman and Robin Eternal. And Clayface? Since when is Clayface part of the Bat family? This is going to be interesting because Clayface has always been a rogue, one of Batman's uh, villains. So this is going to be interesting. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Um, this is one of my top most interested Bat books right now because this is going to involve a lot of people. However, after that we have Nightwing Rebirth, which is the one shot that will catch us up with Nightwing. And, then, and that's in July. Detective Comics, by the way, is... Uh, June 8th is 934 and June 22nd is 935. Um, Nightwing is also going to be a bi-weekly series. The one shot comes out on July 13th and then issue number one comes out July 27th. And I was not a fan when Forever Evil, they let the cat out of the bag about Nightwing. I was very upset and I really wasn't digging Grayson. I read a couple of issues and I just couldn't couldn't get on board. It just wasn't, it didn't feel like Dick. So I'm glad that um, we are going to be getting Nightwing back. And I'm sure Jay jumped for joy when he saw that the costume was going back to the old black and blue layout 
because uh, Jay was not a fan of the black and red. But the one thing I noticed with Nightwing is his costume basically stayed the same from both universes. So his costume had the least change. His costume basically only had color differentiation. I guess that's why they changed him to Grayson because his costume was the least changed out of everybody's. And um, the the last run of uh, Nightwing before Grayson, I liked it. It kind of fell off towards the end when he went to Chicago and they reintroduced other characters. Uh, but I'm really on board with this one, and I'm hoping they get back to basics or get back to the way Nightwing was uh, pre-New 52. I'm hoping we get a little bit of a mixture of both. I mean, the first story arc's called Better Than Batman, so I'm hoping we get... And we get a new character, Raptor. So I, I'm really interested, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've loved Nightwing. To this day, I still wish I could go back and get that first volume of Nightwing. Maybe someday. Not two-day, unfortunately, but one day. And uh, I'm just, I'm really pumped for Nightwing. I can't wait to have Nightwing back. I've been wanting him back since Grayson issue number two. So that says something. Batgirl number one. No rebirth one shot. Issue number one comes out July 13th. Um, Batgirl, I kind of fell out with because I wasn't, you know, when, um, oh wow. Gail Simone was doing Batgirl. I really enjoyed it. I loved, you know, it felt like Batgirl, you know, Barbara was no longer paralyzed. Um, she was back in the Batgirl costume, and, you know, it felt like a Batgirl book. And then after Gail left, they changed Batgirl. And from what I'm seeing here, not much in, you know, the Batgirl book looks to have changed too much. And uh, I'm going to try it because, you know, I like Gail Simone's run on Batgirl. It's too bad she couldn't do, you know, Batgirl issue one for the rebirth. Maybe she'll come on later on. I don't know. But. I'm going to give it another try. I'm going to see maybe the new costume, the new layout and everything will work for me this time around. I'm not making any guarantees for any number ones, but I'm still going to give it a try because, you know, Rebirth and number ones. Uh, also, we have Batgirl and Birds of Prey, which will be a monthly book. And that's coming out. Uh, issue number one comes out. Oh, the one shot. Pardon me. The one shot comes out. On July 20th, which will set up, obviously, uh, Batgirl and Birds of Prey. And then issue one comes out August 24th. And that's going to be Batgirl teaming up with Black Canary and Huntress. Um, and somebody's taken over um, Barbara's former identity, Oracle. Now, I mentioned Oracle kind of needed... I wish that somebody would have taken over the Oracle mantle. And it looks like this story arc is going to kind of do that. They're going to kind of find somebody to take over Barbara's Oracle spot and keep Barbara as Batgirl because I don't think anybody wants back uh, wants Barbara back in the Oracle position. We all like her as Batgirl now and I'm digging Huntress's outfit. I'm digging uh, Black Canary's outfit. It all looks really awesome. I'm hoping that at some point we get White Canary from Legends of Tomorrow in the comics but I guess that's something for later in um, when it comes to um, what do you call the comic universe. So, again, like Batgirl, I mean, I'm going to try it out. If I like it, I'll be sticking with it. I mean, Huntress was my favorite uh, miniseries that came out of New 52. So hopefully this time around, we'll, you know, it'll be the same way with um, with this book, with Batgirl and Birds of Prey. Maybe I'll like it and I'll continue it. If not, you know, there are many other ways or, you know, just drop it. Uh, I'm going to try, like I said, everything. I feel like I'm stuttering. So we're going to move on to All-Star Batman number one. This is where Scott Snyder is going. And it's a villain-driven book. And it starts off with Batman and Two-Face on the road. Uh, that's literally what we got. Now, while I love Scott Snyder's writing, John Romita Jr. is going to be switching on... A, he is in the fold. He will be with Jock and Sean Murphy. Now, Sean Murphy's artwork... I like Sean Murphy's artwork. Jock, I'm trying to remember a book that he's done. I know I've read a book with his artwork before. Um, I only know artists if they're really good or really bad so the fact that Jacques is not coming to me means he's not really bad so uh John Romita Jr. hopefully will be um the least involved in the art for All-Star Batman because honestly John Romita Jr.'s artwork either you love it or you hate it to be quite honest and I'm not a fan of it I you know I'm glad he's off Superman but it's gonna take a while before All-Star Batman warms up to me possibly because of the artwork so um yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, we're moving into the Superman un uh, part of the universe now, which this has to be the most excited because uh, the old DC Universe Superman is actually taking up the mantle, and we don't know 
where the new DC Universe Superman is. I mean, we have inklings of uh, of an idea because we see that in the new story arc that's going on right now in the new in the um, Superman series after we just got through that powerless uh, him versus Vandal Savage story arc. So it might explain where the new DC Universe Superman is or the new DC Universe Superman somewhere out there and he's just not going to be in his books for a while. But we start off with Action Comics 957, which comes out in June, and 950, uh, June 8th, and 958, which comes out July, June 22nd. So again, this is a bi-weekly book. I'm okay with that. Um, Lois, Clark, and John move to Metropolis. Lex is now claiming to be the Superman um, in Metropolis. And I'm really excited. We get to see Doomsday on a cover. We, we see Lex versus Superman. It's going to be really interesting to see how old DC Universe Clark meshes in this world. And it's written by Jeff John, uh, Dan Jurgens. Why did I say Jeff Johns? It's written by Dan Jurgens. Uh, I'm really excited. I've wanted Dan Jurgens back on Superman for a while. He's done Lois and Clark, and it's been amazing. So I know that Action Comics, just like Lois and Clark, is going to be amazing as I take a sip of my Pepsi. <sighs> okay. So Action Comics I'm really excited for. Um, I really can't wait to you know get it. I like the new Superman costume, by the way. Yeah, I know a few people will be like, well... To go with the missing red underwear, now he's missing the red boots. Yes, that's true. But at least we got rid of that stupid collar. And, I mean, yeah, there are still those weird wristings, but it's not so predominant. It looks more like the classic Superman costume, which I like. I can live with this costume for Superman, at least. It's not armor. It's an actual costume. So, I never understood why Superman needed armor anyway. So, I'm looking forward to that. Now, monthly, once a month, we're going to be getting a, a new series called New Superman. Uh, it starts in, on July 13th, and uh, it's a 17-year-old Chinese man, uh, and he starts to gain the powers of Superman. And you see him, we see a, we have a lot of designs for the costume. The cover looks like he's holding an S. So it's going to be real interesting to see where this book goes. I don't know, it feels like something new, something we haven't seen if at all, you know, in a very long while. And I'm interested in seeing a new character entering in the Superman family. Do I think this series will last as an ongoing? I really truly de think it depends on the writing and how the artwork is and how the story goes. But in the long run, at, m at least I see a good 12 issues out of this series before it ends up going away. I mean, it's a monthly series, so I definitely see the series lasting for, a, you know, a year at minimum. Um, if this series takes off really well, I see this series definitely as one of the mainstays, at least for a while. And that's what I'm hoping for. I want some diversity when it comes to Superman books again. We didn't, we haven't gotten that with the New 52. We got Superboy, which kind of got canceled quickly. Supergirl, which she complained a lot. And then, you know, the main Superman books. We didn't even get like Steel or anything like that. So I, again, it's something new um, for the Superman books. Which then leads us into Supergirl Rebirth issue number one, which comes out August 17th, which is going to catch us up with Supergirl, let us know what she's been up to, and then on September 7th, the series begins with Supergirl issue number one. It's a monthly series. Um, my problem's this. The series is taking up right where the previous Supergirl run left off. I like the new costume. I'm going to throw out the good stuff right now. I like how it's mostly... Uh, the costume from Supergirl's past, except for the boots, but boots can change, and that is, again, just a nitpick. But Supergirl can't stand being on Earth. She wants to go back to Krypton, and that is too much like the Supergirl we got in the New 52, and hopefully the whininess <clears throat> to the New 52 Supergirl is gone, and we get a more mature Kara, but I don't know if we will. And Cyborg Superman is still her father, uh, Zor-El, and he's the one that's going to tempt her with a life on Krypton. And I feel like we got the Cyborg Superman story already. We got Krypton already. We should have moved past this. So I'm kind of hesitant with this book uh, a little bit. Because we got this story. And this is the story that kind of was the swan song for Supergirl. It was the last thing that we got from Supergirl in the New 52 before the title got canceled. So I'm kind of hesitant when they start Rebirth off with that story arc or a, a you know, kind of continuation of that story arc. Um, hopefully after this first story arc, we can have a more Earth-based Supergirl and just leave it at that. Maybe that's what this story arc's all about. Just proving to Kara that her place is on Earth now. 
if that's the case, so be it. As long as it's not a 12 issue, you know, full year long story arc, I'm okay with that. All right. In August, we have Trinity Rebirth on August 10th. That will set up the Trinity book, which will catch us up, I guess, with Clark, Diana, and Bruce together. I guess that's how they're going to form their Trinity. And then on September 21st, we'll get Trinity issue number one. And it's a monthly series as well. Um, There are no details given, but I'm guessing this is going to be a mix of uh, Batman and Superman and Superman and Wonder Woman. It's just going to be those two books combined and it's going to have just the three superheroes. It's like the Justice League minus the Justice League and just leaving. Well, not it's the Justice League, but take away everyone except Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. They're going to be dealing with characters from their corner of the DC Universe. And um, hopefully it'll be done good. I mean, if you look at Wonder Woman's sword on the cover, it has all the villains. Well, a number of villains from each one of their um, galleries. So hopefully it'll be fun. I have my fingers crossed. Now, when I think Trinity... First thing I think of is that weekly series that was horrid. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that this uh, version of Trinity will take the bitter taste of that um, weekly series out of my mouth. I mean, Francis Manipal's writing it. He's drawing it with Clayman. So hopefully we'll get a really good Trinity book out of this. I'm excited. Um, and it has a lot of potential. And I guess that's the book I'm most looking forward to in September so far. Now, on August 10th, we get Superwoman issue number one. Now, it looks to me... I mean, we don't know anything. All we know is Phil Jimenez is doing the art and the writing, and Emanuela uh, Lupacino is switching on and off, and it's a once-a-month book as well. This could be Lucy Lane as Supergirl with a newer costume. I mean, the S looks very much like the electric Superman S. Uh, The costume looks a little bit like Lucy Lane's costume before New 52 started, minus the hood. So... This very much can be Lucy Lane as Supergirl because we see the Jets. She could be part of the army. We don't know. And I'm looking forward to seeing this series because it it definitely, if they're following what they were setting up for in the Superman books of old, in the old DC Universe, this could be very interesting. And it'll be interesting how she interacts with the rest of the Super family. Which now leads us into the main Superman, well, the second main Superman book, which is Superman Rebirth, which that's dropping June 1st. And then the series kicks off with Superman issue one on June 15th. It is a bi-weekly book. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, We didn't get any details on this book as of yet. I love the new costume. It is a strong connection to the old DC Universe Superman costume and very little connection to the new DC Universe Superman. You got the yellow S on the cape again. You don't have a collar. Yes, the red boots are gone. Yes, the red trunks are gone. But it doesn't. It's not an armor suit anymore. It's a suit suit. So I'm really. I know it's it's nitpicking. Even the S is back to a more classic S. So I'm looking forward to seeing you know where this goes. And on another cover, we see red boots. So maybe you know the red. Maybe they added the red boots later because we see that on the co- one of the covers, either for Superman number one or number two. Uh, but. Maybe the red boots will come into play, and then we go back to just not having the underwear. But it, which, at this point, after five years, no offense, I could live a couple of months more or a couple of years more without the red underwear. You know, Clark will find a way to bring those back. I'm hoping they find a way to bring the Kents into this universe. To be honest, hopefully there'll be a way. I don't know. But then, lastly, and I don't know why Wonder Woman's in this category, but we have Wonder Woman Rebirth, which comes out June 8th, and then the series kicks off on June 22nd with the actual issue number one of Wonder Woman. And Greg Rucka is taking over again. He had an amazing run before with Wonder Woman. I did not read that run. I was not reading Wonder Woman at the time. So this is my way to jump in. It's going to be a bi-weekly book as well. So we have two artists, Liam Sharp and Nicola Scott, who are going to be switching on and off, I guess, per issue or per story arc. Here's my issue with this series. Every other book... They're doing two stories. Issue 1, 3, and 5 will be one story. And then 2, 4, and 6 will be another. They connect, but one takes place in the past. And one takes place in the present. And the stuff in the past impacts the present. I just hope things don't get very confusing. That's my one hope. And I and if it does, then there's going to be a problem reading Wonder Woman if it becomes too incoherent. But we've been promised that it won't be. That things are going to make sense. That... Um, Everything will line up. 
So now we're going into the Justice League and other books. We have Justice League Rebirth, issue one, well, the one shot, coming out on July 6th, which is going to set up the new Justice League or the ongoing new team of the Justice League. And then we have Justice League issue one coming out July 20th. I hope I said July 6th, by the way, when I said Rebirth's one shot. If not, now you guys know. It's going to be a twice a month book. There are no details. Brian Hitch is taking over on Justice League with art by Tony S. Daniel and Fernando Passari. And I love, I like both artists, both names I remember, and I'm looking forward to what Justice League is going to have to offer. It looks like they took the old DC Universe Superman and younged him up, or maybe this is the new DC Universe Superman in the Justice League. We don't know, and I guess we'll find out as the... Rebirth one-shot comes out because we don't know where the new Superman is yet. Maybe he is going to die. Maybe. I mean, there was a rumor he was going to die. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. On June 8th, we have Flash's Rebirth one-shot. And then the series starts on June 22nd with Flash issue number one. We get introduced to a new uh, villain, Godspeed, which is a white and gold version of a speedster. So it's going to be interesting to see the introduction of Godspeed and what kind of threat he's going to hold for Flash. The artwork in the book, I could talk, looks nice. The covers look really good. Um, I got out of Flash after Francis Manipole left the book. Just, you know, I tried for a while. It just wasn't speaking to me. So hopefully, hopefully Joshua Williamson, I said his name before finishing my sentence, will make this a book I can come back to and enjoy. And it is also a twice a month book. A lot of the main titles, the main characters, are getting twice a month books. Which now leads us to Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps' Rebirth one-shot on July 13th. And then on July 27th, the issue number one drops. Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, Guy Gardner, Kyle Rayner. All the main Green Lanterns. I like that already. So it's going to have Hal Jordan and the Corps, you know, fixing their reputation. And now it looks like it's going to be done right. Where Hal Jordan doesn't have to look like the vigilant, like the bad guy, that he was the reason why the Green Lanterns got their bad name. So, and Robert Vendetti staying on this book, which I like, because I think Robert Vendetti can tell a really great space story. And if Hal Jordan's in space, it's going to be great. And when he comes back to Earth, hopefully he'll be a little bit more Earth based. But, you know, fixing the Green Lantern Corps' reputation is good. And also, they're going to be reclaiming their role from the Sinestro Corps. So it's going to be interesting to see how Sinestro feels about that. And let's not forget, Saranic is the leader of the uh, Sinestro Corps at this time. So it's going to be very uneasy for her, I'm sure. But who knows? Maybe she's been brainwashed to believe that the Sinestro Corps is better than the Green Lantern Corps. At this point, we don't know. But again, I'm really looking forward to where this goes. And I'm glad that we're getting all four Green Lanterns in one book. Which then leads us into the second Green Lantern book, Green Lantern's Rebirth, issue one, uh, the one shot, drops on June 1st, and then the issue one drops on June 15th. It is a twice a month book, and it focuses on Simon Boz and Jessica Cruz. Apparently Jessica Cruz is going to lose the power ring and gain a Green Lantern ring, and they did kind of mention that. And I guess Simon Boz is going to be her um, trainer. And we also see the Red Lantern Corps in the background of the Rebirth issue. So will the Red Lantern Corps make their deadly, you know, reappearance? We know that Guy Gardner is now officially going to be with the Green Lanterns again. So will, um, oh God, why did the name leave me? Atrocitus take over as the Red Lanterns Corps leader again? Will Blaze or Blaze take it over? Who knows? But I'm really excited to see where this book... I I haven't been excited for Green Lantern in a while, so that says something. Now, on August 3rd, Cyborg Rebirth's one-shot comes out. And then on August 17th, uh, the issue one drops. It's going to be a a twice-a-month book. I did not get into Cyborg in the New 52. I'm hoping that maybe this time I will get into it. But the character itself, I don't see why Cyborg needs his own series. Um... He worked great in Teen Titans. I don't know if I'm going... This might be one of the first of the of the few that I have a feeling I will probably be letting go of early on because it just won't speak to me or maybe it'll, you know, fall to a digital format. I don't know. But Cyborg, hopefully uh, John Semper will give me a reason to want to stick around with Cyborg. 
Now we go into Aquaman Rebirth one shot, which comes out June 8th. And then Aquaman issue one drops on June 22nd. It is going to be a twice a month book. I'm already interested in seeing where this is going. You got him versus Black Manta. You've got other people. You got Mira and Aqualad in the uh, Garth on the Rebirth one shot. Who knows where this is going, but, and it involves Atlantis. It involves a lot of things. I like the first story arc of Aquaman. Things kind of fell off for me later on. Um, Dan Abnett's writing it, and so is Brad Walker. So maybe they'll get me into uh, Aquaman again. Jeff Johns got me interested. So hopefully they'll keep the um, the hype going with Aquaman. I don't know. But uh, I'm hoping they do because Aquaman definitely seems like a book I would be into You know, trying if it really was something out there. And then we get an image of the Joker for Justice League 50. So I'm guessing that plays into what's going to be going on, uh, you know, setting up for um, Rebirth. Anyway, now we go into other books. I guess this is just the DCU in general. We have Titans Rebirth, which is dropping uh, June 15th. And then the actual series begins on July 27th. It is a once a month series. It's Nightwing, Red Arrow, which I'm believing he's still going to be Arsenal. You've got, um, oh, I forgot what her her name was. Lilith's character. You have Aqualad and you have Nightwing so far. I'm sure other Titans will join. So obviously we will have a Titans team other than just the Teen Titans. And I, I like that because these are the Titans of old. So it's really great to see that Dick will have his book and he'll also be on Titans. So that's really awesome. I'm looking forward to Titans, especially because I've been really loving Titans Hunt. Hopefully this will... Uh, it actually does say it's it's going to be coming right out of the 80-page special. So, uh, And the Titans Hunt is going into it. So I'm glad that Titans are kind of sticking. You know, they're, they're still together. On August 3rd, we get Harley Quinn number one now. I didn't get into Harley... I, I started Harley Quinn. I fell out. I got back in. I started reading it, you know, just casually. I don't review Harley Quinn. So hopefully uh, Harley Quinn issue one will get me back into it. Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor are on it. So hopefully I'll be into into um, Harley Quinn again. Uh, underneath that we have Suicide Squad Rebirth coming out in August. No date announced yet. And then also in August. Um, and by the way, Harley is twice a month. Uh, Suicide Squad is also twice a month. And then sometime in August when we get issue one... Uh, the new team is going to be Harley, Killer Croc, Deadshot, Katana, Boomerang, and some unrevealed characters. So there's going to be other characters joining Harley. Is Harley leading the team? Will Amanda Waller be leading the team? I don't know. But we get the movie lineup. We just don't know what comes after the movie lineup. Who else will be joining the team? And I'm I'm interested in seeing where where this goes. And Jim Lee is going to be tagging in and out with Philip Tan for the artwork. So I'm looking forward to that. For Green Hour Rebirth, which comes out June 1st, and then the ongoing series, Green Hour Issue 1, starting on June 15th, I really don't have much to say on. It's going to be a twice-a-month book. Um, Green Hour and Black Canary finally meet. I mean, maybe this is where their relationship in the new DC Universe will bloom. Michael's been into Green Arrow. I really... This is one of those books where I I just reference Michael because Michael at this point has been the one that's been reading Green Arrow, so I leave that to him. Same thing with this book, which is a a once-a-month book, however, and that's Red Hood and the Outlaws Rebirth coming out on July 27th, and then Red Hood and the Outlaws begins on August 24th. Red Hood recruits Bizarro and the Amazon Artemis into his Outlaws. So basically, I guess Arsenal joining Titans and Joker's daughter probably just going crazy insane uh, he needs two new partners I don't see this trinity of outlaws working I mean this is basically and the reason I say trinity is because this is the vigilantes of the original trinity Red Hood being for Batman Bizarro obviously Superman and then Artemis being for Wonder Woman I guess they're trying to do a here's the trinity and then here's you know their outlaws I don't know um, this is again Mike's book, so I really there's not much I could say about it because Michael's been reading it. Hellblazer Rebirth comes out July 20th, and then the series begins on August 3rd. It's a once a month book. Mike's been into John Constantine, but again he's teaming up with Swamp Thing. Every time you say John Constantine or Swamp Thing, one of them ends up in the book with the other. So I'm really it sounds very interesting that he's teaming up with Swamp Thing. Maybe I'll check this book out. Um, 
but most likely Michael will be the one reading this because he was a huge John Constantine fan. Deathstroke Rebirth hits August 10th. Then issue one starts on the 24th. It is a twice a month book. I do not know. I tried. I did not like the first volume in New 52. The second volume had promise, but towards the end fell short. This time around, I don't know. I truly and honestly don't know if that bitter taste in my mouth will go away from the previous volume, but we will try and we will see. However, this book I'm really happy is coming back. Batman Beyond Rebirth, which comes out September 28th, and then Batman Beyond Issue 1 comes out in October. Terry McGinnis is back. Will we be getting Batman Beyond the way we had it, like the animated series? Or will Tim succeed... Because Tim is the Batman Beyond that we had or have in the New 52. Will he succeed in defeating Brother Eye? And will he do it in the past so that the future basically just comes back into being what it was? Dan Jurgens writing this. I trust Dan Jurgens. I'm going to jump in and see where this goes. Blue Beetle Rebirth on August 24th is the one shot. And then the series begins on September 28th. It is a monthly series. I am in no form really interested in this book. Ted Cord is back because Jamie Reyes is uh, with his mentor, Ted Cord. So Ted Cord's alive again, everybody. Um, but again, I don't know if the, the return of Ted Cord is going to save this series for me. Michael will be reading it. I'll be checking it out um, casually. We'll see if this has any wings to it, but it's going to take a lot. Then we have Teen Titans Rebirth on September 21st with the first issue dropping sometime in October. It's a monthly book and it's Damian Wayne leading the Titans. Raven, Starfire, Beast Boy, and I forget who else was part of the team. Is that, um, oh, and Kid Flash. Wally West, Kid Flash. And this is the Wally West from the New 52 uh, universe. So... Again, I have to see where this goes. It's definitely bouncing off of the animated movie that's coming out next week. So we'll just have to wait and see. That's how I feel with Teen Titans because the new 52 runs were horrible. The pre-new 52 runs were awesome. Let's see where Damian Wayne takes Teen Titans and if it is worth reading. Super Sons. Uh, It's the son of Batman meets the son of Superman. John and Damien meet, and this is basically their once-a-month team-up book. And it starts on September 7th. I'm interested. I cannot wait. And if they're brushing John up to be the new the new DC Universe Superboy, awesome. Would I have liked to see Connor Kent, you know, pop back in the, you know, new DC Universe, the pre-New 52 John, Connor Kent? Yes. Hopefully we'll see him someday, but obviously not today. That's really all I have to say with that. And then Justice League of America was just announced. It's coming out on September 14th. Uh, It's going to be twice a month and there were no details released. However, we got a couple of... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Those are screenshots from the 80-page giant. We have no idea what it is. We got a white... You know, it looks like a poly bag with JLA on it. If it is anything like the JLA we are getting right now, I can tell you guys off the bat that this series will be dropped by issue 3. Because the only reason I'm still picking up JLA now is because I just ha- I feel the you know the need to finish the series because it's so close to completion anyway. Even though it's been delayed several times, JLA New Fifty Two version will be going well into the first two months of Rebirth. So again, if it's anything like its predecessor JLA from the New Fifty Two, I probably will not be. Um, keeping it long hopefully it won't be hopefully it'll be its own entity and that's all the books and i feel like i literally went a little bit long on that but that's my thoughts on all of the rebirth uh titles announced i'm sure there'll be more later on like when the new year hits and as we go forward titans titles will be canceled new ones will be announced and you know dc is going to play the uh Let's test the waters for all these different books game. And hopefully we won't lose that many books this time. Because I feel like the New 52 happened. Then when we got to the issue 20s, books started getting dropped. And then it just continued over and over and over and over and over again. I want the books to get their roots before DC realize, uh, decides to pull it or keep it. Uh, a lot of books had potential. 
but ended too soon. And then other books went on way too long and needed to be canceled way before they were. So I, I'm really DC looks like they're really trying hard to, um, in, you know, get the new fans to stay and bring the old fans back. As I'm taking a sip, one second. <clears throat> but uh, it looks like DC's really trying to bring everybody back. They're trying to to not alienate their fan base anymore, and I like that. And I give DC kudos for their attempt, their their rebirth. You know, the rebirth. And hopefully, things. Uh, hopefully, by this time in September, I'll be saying Rebirth was amazing. We got DC back to a point where I'm comfortable. I feel like I'm in, you know, a, a Zen place with the universe. New readers, new 52 readers are in a Zen place, and old readers are in a Zen place. Because then everything's fine. As long as we're in a universe where we feel like <clears throat> things don't alienate us or legacies that have been going on for 75 years aren't erased and things make sense and there aren't plot holes and crazy stuff going on yeah then as you as dc will see people will buy more people will come in more because yes the legacies of all the superheroes are vast and you can go back and get a hundred i i can attest to at least 30 or 40 trade paperbacks of superman to go all the way back and get myself all the way into the 80s at least. Yes, there's a lot of history, but the history is what made the characters unique. It, gave, it, it, it is them. It's their character. It's their personality. It's what they stand for. You can't take that away. And DC Comics is finally realizing that, I hope. And that's what they're bringing back to us in Rebirth. So I've got my fingers crossed. I hope all of you guys are excited like I am. I'm sitting out of the event on Marvel, which is Civil War 2. I'm going to be casually reading the main um, <clears throat> the main Civil War 2 book. And I guess I'll be checking out Kingpin 1 because I've been hearing good things. But every other tie-in I'm sitting out of, I am burnt out on Marvel events. DC hasn't done nearly as much as Marvel. Marvel does like three a year. And this is going Civil War 2 is going to be going on as we are in Rebirth. So my focus is going to want to be on Rebirth to see where the universe I grew up in and the universe that started me into comics is going before I go into any more events that Marvel's trying to push because of their movies. Uh, not saying it's going to be bad. I have no clue where Civil War 2 is going. I like Civil War 1. I just, there's no need for a Civil War 2. But. It's going to happen, and I'll read the main book. I'll read the main event book, but other than that, if it's not a book I normally read, I will not be going out of my way to get all the tie-ins because Secret Wars had a million tie-ins, and 90% of them had nothing to do with Secret Wars and were a waste of money. So, And unlike uh, DC, who is sticking to two ninety nine, Marvel's books, the issue ones are $5 or $5.99, and then... Their issue twos are two ninety nine, and then when they come to specials, they go back to five dollars. Uh, I don't understand why all of a sudden they feel the need to make everything that's either a number one, a one shot, or a big event in a book five dollars. But hey, that's Marvel's thing. I'm not stepping on them for that. You know, everybody wants to make money. That's how they're doing it. Um, I'll be checking out the main story again, and anything else we'll have to see. Uh, where where it falls on my read radar, as they say. But I'm excited for Rebirth. Hope you guys are too. Um, I hope I can get episode four out to you guys next week. Hopefully, I have stuff to talk about in about another five days. Um, let me know what you guys think of any of the titles I talked about here. Are you guys excited for Rebirth, like I am? Because um, it's been a while since I've been excited for something that came out of DC. It's been about five years, so it's about time. That DC, you know, reclaims some, you know, face with me because I miss DC. I truly do. And I feel like this could be the moment where DC really starts to come back into my reading pile again. And I'm excited for it. I'm really excited for it. All right, guys. That's it for this week. Take care as always. Keep reading. Keep collecting. And I will talk with you guys hopefully really soon on the next Dark Avenger podcast. We're up late to the sun We're up late to get drunk We're up late to get drunk